All right. Nice. Oh, welcome. Thank you for choosing this talk. Uh, it is not a 30 minute talk, most likely. I'm just going to give that out right now. Um, I would like to cover, it says programming, following programming paradigms applied to love, life, and death, but it's actually supposed to be programming practices. I didn't want to change it after I realized the mistake, but we're not, we're not going to use functional programming in our lives, even in our programming practices, most likely, you know, given your company situation. Not my problem, but uh, we're going to use practices. All right, let's, let's go ahead and get started with one good practice to keep your interfaces simple. And how does this apply to our lives? Well, why do we keep interfaces simple? Why, why do we even do it in the first place? The idea is that you code to that API because the API isn't going to change on you. Oh, clean space. There we go. The API isn't going to change on you. Things stay easy to replace. OK, well, most things actually should be easy to replace. Most of you people, no offense, are replaceable in my life at the moment. I'm sorry. Not this guy, though. Thank you. No, just kidding. Uh, no, I mean, never mind. OK. <laughs> They're easy to replace, but what does this really mean? Because really, even when you're programming, certain things you may actually use quite a bit of. Like uh, if you're using array, uh, collection libraries and stuff like that, you're using an immense number of features in there. Okay, And so suddenly, you're pretty tightly bound, if you will, to that library. Most interfaces are simple. See, when I go to Burger King, I just need to know that the person I'm interacting with is going to give me food, and I will give them money. And that is my API to that person. But other people in my life involve a little bit tighter coupling, OK? And when we make this, you're, you're making yourself more vulnerable to changes in that person. So before you go and couple tightly to another person's implementation, <laughs> you've got to make sure that you're able to stick with it for a really long time, because it's going to be very painful to replace that implementation later on. In fact, if your coupling gets too tight, it's possible you'll access each other's private parts. <laughs> you may run into, into a, a new instantiation of this interface. I don't know if that's exactly a programming paradigm there, but there you go. Inheritance, yeah. yeah that's um, multiple inheritance, too, which is pretty scary stuff. So <laughs> be careful. <laughs> OK, uh, another thing uh, that I'd just like to point out is that when we, when we decide what language we're going to use, and we're going to talk about from a global standpoint, you know, we've all been grown, we've all grown up, or I think we've all actually been grown up by, or most people at least. Everyone here knows English, otherwise you wouldn't be listening to me. Uh, and the language we choose is a very expensive to change. OK, so once we've chosen a language, I mean, you have to rewrite everything if you're going to move into a new language. Similarly, Choosing a language can set the framework around how we think. Okay? If you use Scala, for example, you're going to be more likely to write functional code. Even though in almost every language, you could write it under that paradigm, you get encouraged to act a certain way. Similarly, by us using English, I know that we have less words for love and all these other things. So we may not take the uh, appropriate, uh, we, we don't have a fine granularity in certain areas. Like I know that people have different colors for different shades of green. They'll see them as different colors, is my understanding. Yes, I've heard that. I wish I cited that. That would make a lot of sense, right? But like I said. Oh yeah, citing that bar camp talk. <laughs> so think a lot about the language you use. And that doesn't just apply to English as a whole, but a subset of English that you're choosing to use in your interactions with other people. OK? If you come to a place and you're always trying to use polite language and trying to make other people meet them in a respectful way, you're going to have respectful interfaces with those people. And that may be a life you want to live that way. Maybe you don't want to do that. But you're making a choice, and it will put a framework around how you think. All right. Here's another concept called the single responsibility principle. OK? At any given time, human beings aren't particularly good at multitasking. So it's best to do just one thing at a time, focus, do it well. I'm saying don't walk and chew gum, basically. I'm also saying don't text and drive. That's another one. So <laughs> you guys can get behind at least one of those, I'm sure. 
if we, if we have too many responsibilities, people tend to lead to cluttered, poor implementations for all those different responsibilities. If you think of somebody who's taken on too many tasks at once, maybe they're too responsible in your, in your workplace or something like that, uh, they end up doing a lot of things poorly instead of doing just a couple of things great. So if you have the opportunity, try to focus on just doing one thing at a time would be my suggestion based on my own life experience. You know. We'll have a Q&A. There'll be time. All right. So let's apply design patterns now. What, is, what are design patterns? OK. And don't worry. Let me get through a couple slides before you guys have any opinions about what I'm saying. Stuff like that. OK. All right. Design patterns offer a language with you to communicate with other people. And they're also tested and true things that have been used to deal with complicated situations. So for example, you may want to use an iterator pattern if you can't really afford to have everything in memory all at once. In a, in a situation, you may need a generator and you'll iterate over things as they come in. Similarly, as a society, we've done things. Like for example, if you would like good childhood growth as a person, you should play with Legos. This is an example of a design pattern that's been proven at this point in time in society. All right, cool. And here's, here's one as well. Marriage, I'm going to point out that these are two women being married. So I would, and I'll get to the next slide as well. But uh, I, I believe in my own personal experience that the level of vulnerability and interactions and coupling with a person in a romantic relationship create a situation where you really need to know the other person is committed to you. And having something like marriage there to show everybody that you guys are committed to each other, I feel really helps with that situation. So uh, I think without this, it's, it's much harder to keep a good relationship. So there you go. And the next part, make things as generic as possible. Okay. So when you're writing code, if your algorithm doesn't require the objects to be integers, don't force things to be integers, OK? Try to, try to write it in a more generic way. It leads to more reusability. Please generify that statement. <laughs> All right. Design patterns are for everything, though, OK? Everything that we do, we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm sure that everybody lives their life that way. If you don't, go ahead and raise your hand. Raise your hand if you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There we go. Cool. We're all following an eating design pattern. Okay? It's like, OK, this is how we will make sure that we're properly sustained with enough time to do other things during the day. We'll do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All right. Uh, clothes. Who's here? Raise your hand if you're wearing clothes. <laughs> OK, that's good. If you notice, they all look, about, I mean, it's, it's a very common design. And it's changed over time. I mean, if you look back uh, pre-pants, people wore like you know, robes or whatever. So, Things have changed over time. We found more functional ways to, to wear our clothes. Belts are good. See, I'm wearing a belt. So if you're wearing a belt, you can raise your hand too. There we go. Just a little extra audience participation. But <laughs> overall, clothes is another design pattern. They're there all over the place. Even presentations like this one that I'm giving right now is an example of a pattern that we use to communicate an idea to a lot of people. It's been tried out a lot. It's been found to be a good way to do it. Not saying it's the only way. That's also true of programming paradigm patterns as well. Programming patterns, sorry. OK. Test-driven development. How can we apply test-driven development to our lives? Well, in test-driven development, you're supposed to start off by finding a goal. Then you need to verify you achieved said goal. Then you should refactor, repeat, live your life this way. Go set yourself a goal. Get to your goal. Check to make sure you've reached your goal. Refactor if you think things should be a little bit different, and then find another goal. Who's a good example of this? OK, this guy, Elon Musk, who is my personal hero. I, I love this man. Uh, his goal is pretty much to save humanity. And he keeps picking things over and over again. He started off with, I think, PayPal. You know, he, found, he found this new uh, thing to use the internet for. And then after he succeeded in that, he went and said, well, what's going to be my next goal? And now he's trying to make sure that humanity can sustain itself by having like a colony on Mars is like his final goal. And to get there, he started SpaceX. He started Tesla. He's also a guy who's in charge of Solar City. Tesla and Solar City are both there specifically to help with the whole ecological disaster of global warming that's occurring. He's making lots of money doing it, too. So that's pretty cool. And uh, then SpaceX is his, is his 
work to contribute to getting us to have a sustainable interplanetary species. So don't forget to verify, don't forget to refactor. Those are important statements because if you forget to verify or refactor, you might start thinking that you've succeeded at your goal, but you haven't taken the time to really make sure that you have in fact completed said goal. You just think that you did because you didn't take the time to verify. And after you verify, if you're wrong, don't forget, to re don't, don't forget to refactor as well. So if your implementation is a little screwed up, refactor. Also, don't forget to set a goal. Okay, That's the other step that sometimes it, you, you may forget in your own personal life. Obviously, when you're writing code, I hope that you've set a goal. But in your life as well, it's good to have little goals every day. Try to, try to find something for you to strive towards. So I try to live my life. There we go. All right. Um, also, I've been spending a lot of time uh, in school trying to understand artificial intelligence. It's been very difficult for me, uh, but I took something away, and a lot of the times in these classes, it seems like human philosophy, and one of the things that really got to me was when we're talking about things like, uh, I don't know, like simulated annealing or other concepts like gradient descent, and what these all end up meaning is, you know, you have these slopes and you have something that's moving down the slope or moving around. And over time, if you want that to converge, in most situations, you need to make the, the distance it moves get smaller and smaller over time. This learning factor makes it so that way you change less and less over time. And it helps lead to convergence. That way you, have a, a, you will find a, a local maxima or something of that nature. So that way, yeah, so let's see. Your algorithm will converge, which is a good thing. Uh, but it also means that your initial experiences are going to be much more important than your later experiences in life. That makes change get harder. What are we supposed to do if over time all of us are taking in information and slowly we're building our worldview and it gets more and more you know, precise in how we see things, but maybe we're wrong. I mean. I know that we all see things that are, the previous generation has done that we may not agree with. And we're going to be that generation. Maybe we're that generation already. There is, unfortunately, a solution. Uh, personally, selfishly, unfortunately, a solution. Death. <laughs> OK. I'm going to cite Steve Jobs here. He's a, he's a, he was a great guy, in my opinion. Well, a great. I wouldn't say a great person. I'd say uh, Steve Jobs is an inspirational person. There we go. And he said, death is very likely the single best invention of life. It's life's change agent. It clears out the old to make way for the new. That's kind of sad to hear, but we'll just take that in for a minute. OK. It might help you be more OK with your own death. I don't know. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to end the talk. <laughs> I hope you all die, but after you've converged for a very long time. So there you go. That makes sense. Ooh. All right. That was a lot faster than I thought. Any any comments or questions? I guess I'll open the floor. Yeah. In like in life. Okay. So you've kind of reached your goal, but maybe your life got to be a bit of a mess while reaching your goal, then you take time to try and solidify your life now that you have reached your goal. So if you became like the CEO of a company, but now you have no family life, you take the time to try and rebalance things so that way your implementation is a lot cleaner in succeeding. So, yes? This is true. Towards a bigger Cool. I'm gonna try and say. I'm gonna try to take your comment and put it in the microphone. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So what Jessica has mentioned is that when you try to refactor, uh, what you really want to do is refactor all the time with little micro goals. So in your life, you may have your big goal, but as you slowly and incrementally move towards your goal. Take time at each step to make sure that your life is in balance and your implementation stays clean. This is your life that we're talking about, people. <laughs> Any other? Just yes. make your goals part of a larger story. 
Ah, yes, that's a good. I was I was thinking about adding agile to this, but I, I wasn't able to, to figure it out in a way that made that, that's good though. Okay, so he mentioned that what you really want to do is you want to build a story about how you want your life to play out. That's your life story, and then you set up little micro goals to reach that to complete that story. That's a good idea too. Any any other statements? Any disagreements or anything like that? Feel free. What? That's an excellent question. I actually, um, I, we might be. Although, okay, I'll make a statement about this because I just watched some Stephen Hawking's thing. Uh, repeat the question. The question was, are we just computer programs? Okay, and I will cite, I believe it's Descartes. Please correct me if I'm wrong, please. I think, therefore, I am. Was that him? Okay, just want to make sure. And what that means is that even if we are computer programs, because maybe we are, maybe we really don't have free will, but regardless of whether or not we have free will, we still have the option to make a choice at any given time. Whether or not we actually have control over the choice we make, we're still able to make that choice. And similarly, if we are just computer programs and the meal that you just ate at lunch wasn't real, your desire to eat that meal was real. So no matter what, you are a real being if you have a desire to eat the, well, okay, that's, that's a, too specific. I need to be more generic in that statement, but you're trying to be a, a, you are a real human being because you can realize that you are a real, a real thing, a conscious being. Regardless of your implementation, that is true. So, you think therefore I am by Descartes, that is correct. Yes. Yes. But it's actually hard to do better patterns to have six small meals throughout the day rather than That's true. Maybe we chose the wrong pattern for our for our given lifestyle. So <laughs> it's possible that you shouldn't always use the iterator pattern in every situation. <laughs> you might want to go branch out and maybe I know somebody was hating on the visitor pattern earlier, but maybe that does make sense sometimes. So <laughs> you can and you don't wanna when you when it when something it, when you have a hammer everything looks like a nail right is that that's a common statement so similarly we can we realize that we should diversify try out different design patterns see if one of them works better for us so the micro meal pattern if you will that's true any other statements or yes That's, I can see that. I'm just wondering how that variation within those patterns fits your own Oh, yeah. Ah, it's the same pattern with a different implementation. That's true. So maybe, maybe you need more memory to handle Thanksgiving dinner <laughs> than you do to handle uh, prison dinner, for example. It maybe takes more processing power to deal with prison dinner due to all the situations that are occurring, <laughs> depending on the family, of course. Yes. Well, we're talking about Thanksgiving dinner specifically? Okay, so as mentioned, it's mentioned that when you implement Thanksgiving dinner, you may more tightly couple to the other implementations of Thanksgiving dinner that exist around you. So that's, that can lead to a lot of pain sometimes, of course, but that's true, yes. Uh, I, I would say that, I would say that in my own life, I've decided that at 30, I'm just going to forget everything and start over. Amnesia, yes. That's my plan. No, I, I don't know. I, I also was thinking that. I'm like, I really hate this learning factor. It's like, it's what makes me feel like I'm getting better and better at, my, at what I'm doing, but it's also tying me further and further in. Like the first time I heard about Docker, which I'm wearing the shirt for right now, I was like, this is stupid. Why do I need Docker? This is, this is ridiculous. I'll just put things on my computer. Why do I, why do I need to containerize? Why, why is isolation even good? And I think you just really have to take the time to allow that information to be of higher weight when you change 
when you change those sort of things, which takes more energy, but is probably good. What's up? Just implement it at 20% time in your own life. Implementing 20% time in your own life. So just take a 20% out to just reflect. Reflect, experiment. So you spend like a day a week where you're just doing something totally different. Is I, That's a suggestion. I, I like, that'd be cool if you can implement it. That's always challenging. 20% time is also challenging actually at most places. So that's, that's true. Any other ideas? All right, thank you. Thank you all for hanging out with me. Uh, I know it was pretty quick. <laughs>